You're not gonna believe this, but I once fixed a stalling Chevy with a pair of jumper cables and zero tools. No scanner, no parts, no cost. Just an old school trick that most mechanics won't tell you, because if everyone knew it, they'd stop paying $150 for diagnostic resets. Look, your car's got its own brain, and half the time when it's acting weird, it's not broken, it's just confused. But what if I told you there are 5 legit ways to reset your car's computer and fix it, for free, without ever touching a wrench? We're talking real mechanic methods here, from a secret ignition key combo that works like a cheat code, to a throttle reset that could be killing your fuel economy by 12% if you skip it. So buckle up, because I'm breaking down all 5 of these fixes I've used in my shop for years, and you can do every single one in your driveway. Backhand index pointing right stick around, hit that subscribe button, and I'll save you from wasting money on stuff your car can actually fix itself if you know what buttons to push. Fix number 1. Ignition key on off cycling reset, no tools. This one's old school, perfect for older vehicles, especially the pre-2005 crowd. If you've got a Ford Taurus, early Nissan, or even a grumpy old Chrysler, this simple trick might save you a trip to the shop. Just insert the key, turn the ignition to on, don't start the engine, then back OFF, repeat this three times within 10 seconds. It might feel like some kind of Konami code cheat, but what you're really doing is waking up your car's brain and giving it a fresh set of marching orders. Why does this work? Because in these older models, this cycling pattern helps reset things like the fuel pump relay, throttle memory, and even the transmission logic. I had an early 2000s Ford Escape come in that wouldn't shift smoothly after a battery pull ran this reset, and it relearned everything by the time we got to the end of the block. No tools, no money, just the power of timing and the right combo of clicks. Ever try this trick on your ride and feel the difference? Now that's an old school hack that still holds up. But what if you want a more universal reset? Let's go under the hood. Fix number 2. Battery disconnection reset. You'd be surprised how many people pop the hood, yank off a battery terminal, and expect their car to magically fix itself. Doesn't quite work that way, champ. I had a guy last month roll in with his dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree, check engine light, weird throttle response, the whole thing. Told me he already reset the ECU by disconnecting the negative cable for 5 minutes. I asked, did you press the brake pedal while it was off? He blinked like I'd asked him the square root of his VIN. That one step? Crucial. It drains out residual power left in the system, without it, those pesky glitches can hang around like a bad alternator smell. So here's what you actually do, always start by removing the negative terminal, then the positive, don't reverse that unless you enjoy shorting stuff out. Let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and while it's disconnected, hold the brake pedal down for 10 seconds to fully drain any leftover juice. That's what resets the ECU and clears weird memory bugs. When you're ready, reconnect the positive first, then the negative. I've used this method on dozens of cars over the years, especially ones with phantom warning lights, and it works more often than not. Ever had a check engine light just vanish after doing this? Let me know. If you haven't, give it a shot before paying a shop to plug in a scanner and charge you $100 for it. So that's the right way to disconnect your battery. But maybe you want to go high-tech, let's talk scanners. Fix number 3. OBD2 Scanner Reset Here's the thing, just because you've got an OBD2 scanner from eBay doesn't mean you're ready to play mechanic. I had this guy pull up in a late model Hyundai with a blinking check engine light and a printout from a bargain skin tool that said no codes found. Problem was, his idol was hunting like a squirrel on Red Bull. Turns out, the cheap scanner didn't fully read the deeper trouble codes or active monitors, and it definitely didn't touch the ECU's adaptive memory. These knockoff tools often don't connect well to every car's system, especially newer ones. That's why I always say, avoid the $10 tools and invest in something halfway decent if you're gonna mess with your car's diagnostic brain. Now, when done right, this method's pure gold. You just plug your scanner into the OBD2 port, turn the key to the on position, and read the codes. If you know what you're doing, you can clear M and reset the ECU without erasing your radio presets or climate settings. 
Just be aware, not all scanners are created equal. Some will reset certain modules, others won't even scratch the surface of stored data. And if your scanner says everything's clear but your car still runs like it's got the flu? That's your cue to double-check what your tool is actually capable of. Ever been fooled by a scanner that told you nothing was wrong? Alright, techies, before you start blaming your scanner, let's check out a method that doesn't require any tools at all. Real quick, if this kind of no BS car advice is your thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I drop tips like this all the time, stuff I've actually used in the shop that saves people hundreds. No fluff, just real fixes that work. Alright, let's get back under the hood. Fix number 4. Throttle body reset via pedal. Ever notice your engine idling like it just drank 3 espressos after a battery change? That's not just in your head. It's the throttle system throwing a mini tantrum. Modern cars run on drive-by-wire setups, no old-school cables, just sensors and electronics. So when you yank the power, the car forgets the position of the pedal and starts guessing how to manage airflow. I had a guy in with a Nissan Altima, swearing his car had a ghost because the idle would rev up and down at stoplights. We did the reset problem gone in 3 minutes flat. And here's the kicker, Cardups Daily reports that failing to do a proper throttle relearn after service can cost you up to 12% in fuel economy, especially in city driving. That's not just performance, it's money down the drain at every gas stop. That pedal reset is slick, but if nothing else has worked, this next trick is the nuclear option for stubborn glitches. Fix number 5. Soft ECU drain via battery jumper cable. Here's a rare one I almost never see on YouTube, but it's been a lifesaver in my shop more than once. It's called a soft ECU drain, and it wipes out lingering memory way more thoroughly than just disconnecting the battery. Had a guy with a Chevy Cruze that kept throwing weird throttle codes even after the usual resets. I pulled out a jumper cable, connected the positive and negative terminals together, with the battery completely unhooked, don't skip that part, and let it sit for 10 minutes. Boom, ghost code's gone, and idle smooth as glass. You're basically using the jumper to short the system safely and force a deeper reset. The trick is simple but misunderstood. With the battery disconnected, you just connect the cable between the two terminals, no power, no sparks, just creating a loop that clears out residual charge trapped in the car's electrical system. It's like pulling the plug and holding the power button on a frozen laptop. This method doesn't just reset the ECU, it wipes it clean. Want your car to start fresh without random glitches popping back up? This is the reset you're looking for. Conclusion so there you have it, 5 real mechanic methods that can reset your car, fix annoying issues, and save you a trip to the shop all without spending a dime. Whether it's an old-school key trick, a proper battery disconnect, or that secret jumper cable method most people have never heard of, these are the resets that actually work when your car's acting up for no good reason. And listen, I've used every one of these in the shop more times than I can count. They're not magic but they're real-world fixes that can make a car run right again without breaking out the fancy tools or draining your wallet. Backhand index pointing right tried one of these and it worked? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear your story. Backhand index pointing right got a method I missed? Drop that in too. I'm always down to learn something new from the community. If this helped you out, hit that like button, share it with a fellow car nerd, and don't forget to subscribe, I've got way more real mechanic tips coming that'll save you serious time and cash. Catch you in the next one, until then, drive smart and keep your ride running right.